Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode two of HSG Pod. This week, we are going inside the HSG in a conversation with Dr. Ricardo Insausti. Earlier this summer, the HSG had the opportunity to travel to the University of Castilla de la Mancha in Albacete, Spain, where we had a four-day experience, two days of neuroanatomy lectures and hands-on dissections, and two days of working group meetings. Dr. Insausti was a driving force in having this meeting happen, and so we wanted to chat with him about his goals and motivations coming out of this experience, as well as what his hopes are and what his view of the field studying the medial temporal lobe is going forward. At the time of release, we will also be sharing with you the videos of the dissections that occurred. So there will be one video of the pig brain dissection with the hippocampus, and then another two-part video that covers the dissection of the hippocampus in the human brain. Those will be linked below. Until then, enjoy. Today, we're really um, honored that we have with us Dr. Ricardo Insausti here at the medical school at the University of Castilla-La Mancha. And we just are on the end of an amazing four-day experience here um, hosted by Ricardo and his team. And he's agreed to sort of take the time to answer some questions, not only about this meeting, but um, his own research. So thank you, Ricardo, <laughs> for taking uh, the time to chat. Thank you to you. Um, so the first thing that we wanted to bring up is that you were the driving force of this meeting. So could you tell us a little bit about your motivation? Because it, it takes a lot of effort to help host us along with organizing the participation of the other faculty in the human neuroanatomy laboratory here at the School of Medicine. Okay, yes. Um, well, the, the main motivation is that uh, since I belong to HRG group since the first day, so I could see along <clears throat> the different uh, meetings that I have uh, attended, is that um, I was feeling um, distance between the way uh, it is uh, anatomically treated, the images, neuroimaging, in relation to what we were doing every day in our teaching duties to medical medical students, and in particular in the field of the hippocampus and the uh, hippocampal uh, formation in, in general. So uh, that was something that I had in the back of my mind along the years until the opportunity rose and uh, talking with uh, Valerie and with uh, Laura, uh, why don't we go to Spain? That was my suggestion. So then, uh, okay, well, this is the perfect chance, not just to, to host the HSC meeting, but also to add a little, a little more and some experience on the on the uh, human hippocampus, that was uh, the the field of uh, of work, um, and then the people can get the the, the real view. And uh, the move, the size, the relationship, how is it uh, inside the brain? What mm, difficulties uh, could be found in, in determining the different uh, levels of the hippocampus, different subfields, and all that? Uh, I thought, well, that might be quite uh, interesting. So we organized this previous uh, two years of a workshop uh, based on dissection of the uh, human hippocampus. With a uh, little training before on the big uh, happy campus, that I think was was useful because most uh, of the attendees uh, didn't have a direct uh, the dissection experience of the of the brain, and uh, I think uh, we succeeded uh, in that. So, um, the human uh, neuroanatomy laboratory, we are uh, like uh, eight or nine uh, people, six of them. Our faculty and other associate professors, and um, yeah, uh, they, everyone cooperated and, and did their best in order to 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 have a uh, to, to to offer a pleasant uh, stay, not just in <clears throat> in the field of uh, of the work on the purpose of the HSG, because I was uh, absolutely positive, and uh, that would be a big success as in in, in former sessions. I wasn't uh, sure about the, the workshop, <laughs> the section, because there was uh, the first time we, we did that. And so we prepared as, as uh, well, as uh, consciously as we uh, as we thought. 
and uh, yeah, to, to offer all the materials uh, in order to make it easy the, the experience. And that's uh, the, the only motivation, just to, to have, uh, to offer a direct experience on the human happy campus. And then just that, that idea, that feeling, that that view of the of the human brain with the happy campus inside and everything, that is uh, the the real thing you are uh, dealing with in the in the neuroimaging that uh, that could be of help in the the understanding of the whole uh, area. Yeah, I think I can speak for both of us that it's been a highlight of my career to like, actually be able to go into a human brain because even those of us who had some limited dissection experience, it's normally not done mm -hmm. in, in the humans, or at least not in the ability to go through and do the resection of the medial temporal lobe and the mm -hmm. campus yourself. It's already sort of prepared and you can look at it and hold it. So it was an invaluable experience. And I would say that it was greatly successful and you would you would have thought that you were doing it for years, honestly. <laughs> I thank you for that <laughs> opinion because I, I, it, it tells me that I was right in my intuition that uh, it would be useful and helpful to have uh, to offer this experience. Yeah. Um. So it sort of ties into the the next question I was going to have for you was, what were your big goals for the the carrying forward for the experience? So you just briefly mentioned that most of mm -hmm. us don't work with the gross like the actual gross anatomy um and the histology beyond actually being able to look in a 3d shape and most of us spend time looking at mr images or potentially some of us in animal models which doesn't necessarily directly yes. translate mm -hmm. um so beyond giving us the experience is there any goals that you hoped that we walked away with yes in, in addition to look at the hippocampus itself because uh, I mean, everyone speaks of the happy campus as the center of the memory systems and and so on, and the damage uh, in, in Alzheimer's disease and other neurodegenerative diseases uh, is only part of the story, and, and that's why and, and it was part of the, in this meeting the study of the the, the parahippocampal region, the parahippocampal gyrus, which contains the different cortical areas that are feeling. The, the hippocampus with whatever uh, sensory experience we have, and that's uh, all integrated, and uh, that's uh, what enters uh, finally the hippocampus. But again, it has to exit the, the hippocampus, and all that goes through this region, the hippocampal, uh, hippocampal region, with different uh, cortical areas. And uh, I thought that would be also a very good opportunity because uh, I mean, I dedicated some time in the in the past to study the connections in the in the monkey, and they they are um, an excellent excellent guide uh, to to look for uh, connectivity and understanding in other species, um, and particularly in the in the human. So there was a, like a secondary secondary goal, but uh, again, it was uh, I think is uh, also very very interesting. Because it can orient uh, a little bit more, uh, not just the happy campus itself, uh, but also at the surrounding cortical areas being really important. And again, that area is affected, and those areas are affected in, in Alzheimer's disease and other. I mean, in addition to functional studies or other kinds of studies that can be brought with this, um, with this view of the of the not just hippocampus but the, the hippocampal formation plus the parahippocampal region. That's my yeah. and uh, I, I think that was uh, a lot of discussion and <laughs> yeah. they and a half and I'm very happy. Yeah. Um because you've been able to sit in too in addition to the two days of the anatomy lectures and then the you know initial pig dissection and then the crazy amazing day where we got to do the the human dissection you've had a chance to sit in some of the working group meetings and um, provide I think some insight because you have a different perspective not only of you know you have years mm -hmm. you know decades yeah. of research in, yes, in these yes, areas that's right <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yes that's true. Um, and so I think it's it's wonderful that we're able to have this but I also think that the group is grateful for your expertise in this meeting. So um, 
are there specific things that you hope in terms of the translation into study of things like using hippocampal subfields for the study of Alzheimer's disease that are specific to, to walking away from this meeting? So how would you hope that we use the information? So you've mentioned understanding the anatomy, but, and knowing that things involve in a system, but more in the translational sense of, you yes. know, why we do this, why we do this work? Well, perhaps because I am MD, was uh, from the first day devoted to research and teaching. But, uh, I didn't practice, uh, but very, very uh, little uh, medical practice. But nonetheless, it's something that you you, you grow with along the, the medical uh, medical curriculum. So I always think in the usefulness, how can it be applied? And uh, if any, um, although I know I'm really conscious that, that perhaps this is structural uh, neuroimaging, uh, well, as part of the functional neuroimaging <clears throat> has a lot of uh, future and perspective. There are uh, conditions like, uh, I mean, the, the ability, the resolution of the images that, that limits. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, it is known by the neuropathological studies that there are specific parts which are affected more in one type or another type of, uh, of neurodegeneration, uh, interaction with other diseases, uh, more general like vascular, the vascular component, and all that uh, is, is a lot of work, uh, a lot of, uh, but again, I, I think he has a lot of potential in order to sort out how uh, to deal with uh, an early diagnosis. Yeah. So my goal will be, um, how can I help to define regions affected by the, the, the neurodegenerative diseases in, in general, each one, whether or not it has a specific pattern of neurodegeneration and uh, how can be applied to a general uh, to the general uh, people and um, okay, well it's uh, now a screening for uh, for rectal cancer uh, breast cancer uh, lymphomas and uh, prostate uh, cancer there are many many uh, things that can be done just in advance uh, of just screening the people. So why not uh, to have when things progress and it's uh, cheaper, perhaps the technology, why not to do a screening, a brain scan, like uh, at 60 and then 65 or 75 or whatever is the, the term, in, and to see the, the rate of atrophy, where, how, and how does it match? So, correspond to, to the specific uh, patterns that we have defined by this uh, histological boring yeah, no. <laughs> study. I, I, <laughs> not boring. I think, I think something that when you work in the resolution and the limitations of your imaging that you can at times not intentionally but unintentionally take for granted is how precise these transitions are in these areas that are affected and how difficult it is to actually view the areas mm. and the specificity of the pathology that it's affecting. So it's um, as my view of the HSG and all of your work as from the beginning is trying to have this coming together of how can we be as precise as possible using resources mm -hmm. like histology and mapping that on to the best of our abilities, these limited, you know, tools that we have in order to have impact beyond just characterization, which is important. Mm -hmm. But I think most people in the group agree with you that it's characterization and the pursuit of being able to uh, make well, a difference. Together in the same uh, purpose, <laughs> the same the same goal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. makes it nice. So I those are the main questions. But the last question I have is just as we were chatting before this and you were talking mm -hmm. about your, your career, is there any career advice that you would offer those scientists who are coming up and studying this field? Well, I was uh, to fell in love with the hippocampus and connectivity because it's so beautiful. And that's my experience as a medical student. It was the second medical year and I came across the Papes circuit. I fell in love with that. So. I did my PhD, it was a different system, but since uh, 1981, when I went to uh, as a postdoc to the Salk Institute in California, and that was for me just, uh, this is my, my field. 
Yeah. <laughs> I said, well, I found my field, and I never disappointed. I never felt disappointed by by. It. So you have to to love and to have a, a purpose, a sense of purpose. Why are you doing that? Why are you putting so much effort, so many hours of your life, um, affecting family, friends, and all that? Is uh, you cannot avoid, uh, but uh, nonetheless, if it is done with a sense of uh, future, a sense of uh, usefulness to the society, I think it's much more bearable than not just uh, having. Yeah, <laughs> it is just uh, because of advancing the, the, the academic career or something, something like that. Is uh, you love that and you put uh, all the effort as any, but you do with any any person of your surrounding that you are uh, lost to, like family or whatever, yes. Yeah, I think all of us are in love. In with love. The medial temporal lobe. And I think Perfect. during the dissections, when you look at <laughs> some people's eyes, you could see that they were falling in love all over again. Yes. Sure. <laughs> That's a very the, the best group to advance uh, science in in that sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Beautiful. That was beautiful. <laughs> thank you. Wow, so much. Thank you. Thanks so much, everyone, for checking out episode two of HSG Pod. We hope that you enjoyed our conversation with Dr. Ricardo and Sausti. I know that Hannah and I really did. And keep an eye out for the partner to this episode, which will be a conversation with the working group leaders from the meeting in Abbasate, Jenna Adams and Marshall Dalton. And another note that if you have not already, make sure to subscribe to the listserv. It's the current best way to get updates from the HSG. Cheers.